Hello Gibbs Cam users. Today we're going to show you a little bit about thread milling on a mill. As you can see I have my part here and we're going to cut some one inch uh, 12 threads per inch and I just have my stock cut in half so you can see kind of the sliced view of that. And there's basically two types of thread milling tools. Let's bring up the first one. Usually this is a very common one, just a single layer. Uh, usually of course 60 degree on the angle and a number of flutes and as you can see the picture down here of what that tool looks like here and the second type let's bring that one up it looks more like a tap now the of course the picture looks tapered but uh, we have zero degree on the taper so this is a straight thread on there but on here you can of course put in your threads per inch it'll convert it to millimeters up here just so if you're doing millimeters and a number of teeth uh, you can have on this uh, thread mill and many times this is of course called a skip tooth on some of these which will have uh, multiple teeth but the skipped on there. Now the first type of uh, tool this one here if you're doing a your right hand thread which is of course the most common usually you start from the top and go down to do a right hand thread you can always go from the bottom up but there's really no reason to if you don't want to uh, so I usually start from the top. So let's bring up that process to show you how we do that. Let's activate this one. So on this one, uh, of course, your RPM and everything, I'm starting out, I'm uh, doing an ID. I'm starting out half inch from the surface when my surface is Z0. Half inch when we're done. Of course, the surface we're starting from is 0. And my depth minus 1.2. This block is 1 inch thick, so we're going to go... Uh, a little bit past there and we're doing a top down and a right hand thread and we're just doing it uh, not a taper just a straight thread and of course I put in my threads per inch 12 inch it calculates the uh, pitch if it was in millimeters and like I said before it's going to be a one inch 12 threads per inch cut so my finish cut is one inch there and I have material of just 897, so that's basically where it's going to come up through and down and basically the starting point there. You can put wood in, whatever you'd like on here. Uh, just don't get it too close to the finish cut there, especially if you're using cutter comp, because usually you have to cutter comp a thread mill to get the exact pitch for your go-no gauge to make sure it fits. So watch these numbers here. Automatically puts in the thread height here and uh, just a clearance here. And I'm plunging at the center. You could wrap it to and from the clearance diameter. That's up to you whether you want that checked or not. And usually this is just the default numbers, entry and exit 45 degrees. And usually I choose angle here. Now the depth of cut depends on if you want to do it. One cut, two cuts, uh, whatever you'd like to do. Uh, 12 threads per inch. I'm usually starting about, about 40 thou on the depth of cut. And so I'm going to take a number of cuts. Then the last cut, I'm just going to do one more at 1,000. So that'll take a nice uh, finish pass through there. And most of the time, of course, you want cutter comp radius on. I just have a cutter radius comp line of 20 thou there. So usually you have to uh, change your offset in your machine to get your go-no gauge to fit perfectly how you would like. And of course, select the geometry that you're going to cut. This is one inch geometry there. We'll just click on redo and you can see the toolpath there. Now if I render this, slow this down a bit. And we'll speed it up a little bit. You can see there's my first cut. Wrap it back up through the hole. Second cut. I don't remember exactly how many cuts this is going to take. I think it's three. And another cut. Of course, there's my last pass. And depending on the number of cuts you take, depends on what you put in there on the depth of cut there. So as you can see, threads look pretty good. Of course, this is a right-hand thread. So make sure you get that right so you don't get a left-hand thread by mistake. But all that looks pretty good, of course. Now the next one we want to do is I'm just going to do one pass on there, one finish pass through there. We'll open that up. As you can see, pretty much everything is still the same. 
The only thing I did is I checked one finish pass and no spring passes. You could do a spring pass if you'd like, just put in a one there if you want to do that. But that's uh, just a one pass through there. Depending on your material, you can decide how to do that and the fit of your gauges. So if we run that, that's just one finish pass through the part. Looks good there as well. Now the next one is uh, if you want to cut a tapered thread. Let's go through that one. And this one I have um, basically the same thing, just tapered now. So if I chose drop down menu, you got straight, and you have MPT or PSPT, BSPT, or other if you want to put in your own angle there. And when you choose MPT, it automatically puts in the angle for you. You can see this is grayed out. So all you need to do is put in the pitch there. So most of most pipe threads are 11 and a half threads per inch. So you can type that in there. And everything else here is pretty much the same. So if I click on redo and rerun the toolpath on that, let's deactivate this one. So just run the toolpath on this one. get a side view there maybe make it a little bit easier to see so we're doing multiple passes on this and as you can see it's tapering down and a number of passes on that one now the next threading pass is multiple entry threads uh, let's put this in here Let's make this stock here. So when I render, you can see it's uh, all the way, not a section view. So what I want to do is, is do multiple uh, entries. So let's bring up that same tool again. And we're doing 12 threads per inch, but we're doing a, a double entry. And I see this a lot in uh, medical, like uh, bone plates and things like that. Uh, the engineers will want the threads as a double entry thread. And most of those are just two entry. And so they would, be, of course, be 180 degree apart. So I have my first one here, a straight threads. And of course, it's going to be 12 threads per inch if you add both of them up when they're 180 off, 180 degrees off. But I'm doing six threads per inch now. Everything else is the same here. So we'll just redo that. So if I run the simulation just on that, you can see it's pretty coarse in there, but that's just the single entry. So now let's take this, this uh, operation here, make sure it's highlighted. Let's go to the plugins and let's go down to transform toolpath. And here I'm chosen rotate, and the angle is going to be 180 degrees, and transform in this coordinate system, and just one time. So I'm going to click on do it, and then I'll have my second, second form now, or my second entry there. So we can run that and see uh, our double entry threads. Turn on rendering. Got to make that transparent. So here's our first entry and our second entry. And as you can see, if I rotate this around, let's turn transparent off. You can see I have my double entry. Let's go to the top view, make it a little bit easier to see. There's my first entry and my second entry. So I have my double entries 180 degrees apart on that. So basically the last one is to use uh, our tool number two. We've been using tool number one so far so let's use tool number two now and show you how to do that one. So on this one let's bring up our process here and that's with tool number two of course. I showed you this before what the thread looks like. Little picture there. Okay multi-thread or skip tooth. And again everything else here is about the same doing a right hand thread though and this time you want to go bottom up usually on these type because if it goes from the top down it's cutting all the threads with the first couple of uh, teeth 
at the bottom here. So normally you want to start at the bottom and uh, Gibbs will do a couple of turns on there and then come out of the hole. So we have our finish cut. Everything else is here the same. We're just basically using a different tool. I'm just going to do one finish pass on here so you can see. So let's run this one. We'll just do redo on that one. And let's do the operation sim. Slow this down so it's going to all single step it through there. So you can see it goes to the bottom of the hole. And if I slow it down and click play, you'll see it'll do basically one revolution and two, almost two revolutions. Anyway, but that's uh, how you do your thread milling and it's from the bottom up. So you can make sure you're cutting a right hand thread. As you can see, it's a right hand thread. It's going down. So make sure you do it, of course, in the right direction. Watch your rendering to make sure that that's correct. But that's how you do uh, thread milling with this type of thread mill. Start from the bottom and go up. And that's all there is to it. Of course, you have uh, your geometry here. It can be a uh, point or a circle. Normally, you just choose a circle. At least I do on everything. Have the circles. And you can have, of course, as many as you'd like and click on them all at once, and it'll run your toolpath for each one of those. So thank you for watching. That's it for this session.